The Great Dividing Range is a truly spectacular mountain range. It stretches from Queensland all the way through New South Wales down into Victoria, where it then curves west and stretches up to and past Ballarat. And even though it's pretty unrelated to the Great Dividing Range, at least geologically and tectonically speaking, the Grampians is more or less where the line is drawn as being the end of the range. But why does a relatively tectonically stable continent have this mountain range? Australia is smack bang in the middle of a tectonic plate, meaning there are no nearby tectonic collisions occurring, which is what builds these mountain ranges to begin with. And in Victoria, the Alps are actually still rising. And according to John Engel and Professor Woodhead from the University of Melbourne, the eastern highlands of Victoria have been steadily growing at a rate of 76 metres every million years, and are still growing to this day. And the reason for this is related to New Zealand. But why does it curve when it hits Victoria? And what's the deal with it stretching west, going past Ballarat, and ending far into the state? Well, this part of the story has to do with an ancient mountain range that exists here, and its relationship to Antarctica. This is a fascinating story. I'm going to try to keep this video as short and engaging as possible. I might simplify some things, but I will try to not omit too much as I describe what is currently happening with the mountains and fault systems that underlie them in Eastern Australia. By the end of this video, you'll understand why Australia contains the third longest land-based mountain range in the world. The start of the Great Dividing Range can more or less be placed at the beginning of the breakup of Gondwana, which was a supercontinent that would form around 550 million years ago. It would remain this way for over 300 million years, with the landmass of Gondwana beginning its split around 180 million years ago. This split led to the formation of the Great Dividing Range. To the east of Australia, Zealandia began to rip apart from Australia, spurred forth by massive pulses of basaltic magma that penetrated into the many faults and weaknesses created by the rifting and began to push its way up with wave after wave of volcanic eruption occurring. This was the beginning of the Tasman Sea, and New Zealand would continue west furthermore. This rift zone created enormous tension to the plates east and west of it. It squeezed, buckled, fractured and uplifted them, pushing the deep ocean sedimentary material that made up the bedrock of eastern Australia and the massive amount of volcanic rocks that existed alongside it upwards into the mountain range we know today. This would continue until the rift zone eventually became sealed shut forever, and suddenly this was the end. And really, this should have been the end for the Great Dividing Range if it wasn't for New Zealand undergoing incredible tectonic events, the Dividing Range could have been nothing more than tiny bulbous hills due to the erosion. But it isn't. Instead, the subduction event occurring in the North Island and the continental collision between the Indo-Australian and Pacific tectonic plates that is occurring and making up the majority of the South Island, along with yet another subduction zone occurring even more south to this, led to the preservation and continued uplift of the Great Dividing Range. If you watched my video on Victoria's most recent earthquake, you'd know that compressive stresses that are occurring in New Zealand are indeed being transferred through the crust, beneath the Tasman Sea, all the way to Victoria and beyond. The Earth is interconnected far more than people realise, and this connection has luckily led to the formation of a spectacular mountain range in a geologically stable continent like Australia. Compressive stresses transferred through bedrock pushed up the many thousands of faults that exist in eastern Australia when Zealandia broke away from us. These faults became uplifted, and this uplift is the mountains we see today. After the rift zone in the Tasman died out, the tectonic collisions that modern day New Zealand is facing, which I suspect were the reasons the Tasman rift zone died out to begin with, are the reason the Great Dividing Range still exists today, and is still growing with each passing year. Moving on now, in Victoria we have this curve. Why? This is the most fascinating part of the story, for me at least, because the knowledge of it is to some extent new. Victoria was always mountainous, and it was like this many millions of years before the Great Dividing Range began life. 
Victoria's far west was once as high as the Andes, with the ancient Paleo-Pacific Ocean stretching as far as the eye could see. If you were standing on the Grampians, which actually didn't exist 550 million years ago when Victoria first began its life and transition from a deep sea to a mountainous uplifted land. All you'd see was the ancient Paleo-Pacific Ocean in front of you, and behind you would have been massive, uplifted, volcanically dominated Andean-style mountain ranges. We had one tectonic collision that occurred after another, and these collisions slowly assembled both Eastern Australia, but more specifically Victoria bit by bit. And with each new section that was added, a new episode of mountain building would more or less accompany it, minus the odd minor rift event here or there. In the east, the Victorian Alps are definitely influenced by New Zealand's compressive stresses and that's why the mountains there are pretty spectacular. But the Great Dividing Range stretches past Melbourne into an area known as the Central Highlands. This area is the ancient remnant of the original mountains that occurred here, only it's been pushed up recently again, and I'll get into why in a moment. So these original mountains have been heavily eroded in the 450 or so million years since they began life. They're small bulbous hills that are several kilometers lower than what they once were due to erosion, but they also got a breath of fresh air, so to speak, or a second wind, along with the Great Dividing Range. I'm not entirely sure just how affected this area is by New Zealand's compressive stresses. I'd say it definitely has some part to play, but it was only quite recently realized within the past few decades that Victoria had a major north to northeast faulting attributed to it. Which was quite surprising, because originally it was believed the faulting was only east to west in nature, minus a few anomalies here and there. But like Zealandia, Antarctica also said goodbye to Australia when Gondwana broke apart, and the rift event that occurred never stopped. In the present day, you can clearly see the rift zone here. Magma continues to rise from the crust to fill the weaknesses this rift is creating. And this magma is pushing Australia and Antarctica apart ever more. The compressive stress generated by this pushing is still being transferred into both continents. When this event originally occurred, the Otways was formed. The Otways have mountains that are quite different to Ballarat. They are bulbous, but spectacular in size. And they're still growing as well. And beyond them, the compressive stresses are being transferred all over Victoria in a north to northeasterly direction. These stresses are pushing the central highlands up. So this is the incredible story of Australia's unique geographical landscape. What a truly spectacular land this is.